I now call Claire Hockey to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I would like to thank members who have contributed to this debate today and to Monica Lennon for bringing it to the Chamber. Cervical screening is unique. Not only can it detect cancer early, but it can also prevent cervical cancer before it even begins. The screening test detects precancerous cell changes, mainly caused by the human papillomavirus, a virus that 80% of us will get at some point in our lifetime. And treatment as a result of screening prevents eight out of 10 cervical cancers from developing. There is no doubt, therefore, that the cervical screening programme saves lives and it's the best protection against cervical cancer. As a woman myself who has been for a smear test, I believe we must do all we can do to encourage eligible women to take up their cervical screening invitation. I agree with members that it is disappointing that uptake rates for cervical screening continue to decline. Latest figures show that just 72.8% of eligible women attend screening in Scotland, and this is down from 73.4% in 2017 and around 80% 10 years ago. And this trend is not unique to Scotland, it's mirrored across the UK. In my own constituency of Rutherglen, the most recent uptake data ranges from a high of 84.7% to a low of 62.4%. Uptake of screening was highest in women from the least deprived areas and fell with increasing deprivation. So what's putting women off getting tested? Evidence shows that there are a number of barriers, including comp complex emotional obstacles such as fear, body shame and embarrassment, to practical barriers such as struggling to attend an appointment due to work commitments or childcare. New research from Joe's Cervical uh, Cancer Trust and Scottish Government showed that two thirds of Scottish women are unaware that not attending cervical screening is the biggest risk factor for developing cervical cancer. Awareness raising is therefore very important, but we must also recognise that uptake is lowest in our least affluent communities. The Scottish Government's cancer strategy is investing up to £5 million in our NHS national cancer screening programmes, including a cervical to improve outcomes. And these funds are supporting innovative projects, working to tackle inequalities and encourage participation in screening programmes from communities where individuals are least likely to take part. So far, we've committed over £2.7 million to support 25 projects. Cervical Cancer Prevention Week gives us the opportunity to recognise and celebrate the good work currently being undertaken to tackle inequalities of access and to raise awareness of cervical screening in Scotland. And the Scottish Government warmly welcomes the input of Joe's Cervical Cancer Trust to the Scottish Cervical Screening Programme and we work very closely with the Trust to encourage women to attend screening, especially in hard to reach groups. Joes have received funding under the Cancer Strategy for a Glasgow outreach service which targets specific groups where there are significant health inequalities and a higher rate of non-attendance. And they work with local GP practices, sexual health clinics, community groups and volunteers mm -hmm. to improve access to and uptake of cervical screening. Last year, Joes ran their first ever Scottish B Cervix Savvy Roadshow which visited high streets and retail parks across Scotland, increasing awareness by addressing public knowledge around cervical screening and cancer. I was pleased to learn that two community workers from my own constituency of Rutherglen were trained as volunteers and joined the road show when it travelled to Lanarkshire. The Scottish Government Cancer Strategy is also supporting Clyde Gateway, Scotland's biggest and most ambitious regeneration programme to tackle inequalities in access to screening. The Clyde project includes the creation of additional monthly cervical screening clinics and this gives women the choice of a more convenient appointment time, increasing flexibility and accessibility. And the yes, sir. Elaine Smith. Thank you. I uh, thank the Minister for taking the intervention. Some of the projects mentioned earlier, uh, I wonder if any of them involve working with women who are homeless? Claire Hockey. I was going to address that point a bit further on in my speech, so I, I, I will do that if that's all right with, with, with Elaine Smith. Um, they have also developed a community health pathway in the community of Burnhill in Rutherglen, the second most deprived community in South Lanarkshire. 
337 local residents have been consulted through door-to-door -door engagement, supplemented with residents on the street and via local activity groups. And these are just a few of the excellent projects which are currently underway and have only just touched the surface. It's vital that we continue to explore how screening can be more effective at reaching those in greatest need. And we will bring together all the learning gathered from these projects in a cohesive and coordinated strategy to reduce screening inequalities. We're complementing this work with our cervical screening awareness campaign flower, which started running in cinemas yesterday and which will run across digital platforms from the 28th of January. The campaign targets 25 to 35 year old women who we know are less likely to attend. And the campaign encourages women to take up their screening invitation and recommends women who missed their last appointment or who have never been screened, contact their GP. I'd also like to take this moment to thank all those who are undertaking vital work in raising the awareness of the importance of cervical screening. Finally, presiding officer, I would like to briefly mention our cervical cancer vaccination programme, which we introduced in 2008. Since the programme was introduced, uptake rates have remained high and continue to exceed 80%. The programme has been evaluated since it began and is already showing encouraging and positive signs that the rate of cervical cancer caused by the HPV virus will reduce in future. However, the vaccine does not protect against all cervical cancers, so regular screening is still important and will continue to be an essential part of our armory for years to come. And we must continue to get this message out to young women. And if I could address a couple of the, the issues that members raised during um, the debate. Um, Emma Harper asked about, or spoke about the uh, self-screening. And yes, NHS uh, Dumfries and Galloway is um, a, do, uh, carrying out a small scale pilot in the board. Um, and we're looking at the possibility of a national pilot the UK Screening Committee um, are looking at the evidence for self-sampling and we're awaiting their advice um, for proceeding further with that. Um, you, I was asked about um, by Miles Briggs and Alison Johnson about looking at the potential of digital communications um, to encourage people to take up their invitation for um, screening. And as part of the work under the cancer strategy, learning will be used to develop future communication plans including obviously looking at uh, di digital and technology. And uh, Elaine Smith asked me about um, homelessness and there's a number of projects currently um, through the cancer strategy where we're looking at how screening services can be improved for hard to reach groups, which would of course include um, women and men um, uh, who are homeless, those with learning disabilities and also those with mental health issues. President Officer, uh, we here tonight share the same ambitions to make cervical screening accessible to all women across Scotland, regardless of where they live, and by understanding and reducing the barriers that women face. We all have a role in sharing the potentially life-saving messages about cervical screening with all the women in our lives. So together, let's nip cervical cancer in the bud. Thank you.